Every year, I go to the Bridges Conference, which is about mathematics and art. In addition to talks, hands-on workshops, evening performances, and other events, the conference includes a fine art exhibition. This year's was probably the largest math art exhibition ever held anywhere. Participants come from all over the world to share their work and get a kind of creativity recharge by seeing what everyone else is making. A wide variety of media are represented, including painting, sculpture, quilts, beadwork, basketry, ceramics, computer graphics, tazib, 3D printing, laser cutting, fashion, knitting, embroidery, tamari, animation, metalwork, woodworking, wood carving, paper cutting, paper folding, paper assemblies, wire sculpture, string art, and much, much more. So this is a cheap way for making a representation of a negative curvature. You take a basket weave based on a hexagonal mesh and you insert some heptagons which will deform the mesh and give us this kind of approximation of a minimal surface. I do uh, three-dimensional string sculptures based on the uh, work that started with early mathematicians with uh, Gaspard Mange, the uh, inventor of or discoverer of uh, descriptive geometry and his student Theodore Olivier. Such diverse works really are not comparable. But we do still have a kind of people's choice competition in which all the conference participants can vote on their favorite works in four categories. As for myself, it's really hard to choose a favorite. But as a fan of polyhedra and a woodworker, I might want to vote for the effort and care that I can see goes into large sculptures like these. And as someone who's been inside of many computers, I just love the whimsical idea of repurposing computer components and motherboards to make an icosahedral virus form like this. I also love the idea of knitting an illustration of a Reitermeister move from knot theory as a decoration for a scarf which ends up knotted around one's neck. And there's something absolutely lovely about the patterns of dendritic growth that would make me want to vote for this organic design. Or really, what could be cooler than a laser-cut jacket? The pattern here is a fractal design made of smaller copies of itself. So I sort of want to vote for this too. With such difficult decisions to make, maybe I would seek the relaxation of an endless labyrinth with no goal square that you feel no pressure to have any place you have to reach. And these are just some of my favorites. But now, what did the people choose as the four actual winners? In the category of most effective use of mathematics, Robert Giardilli from Argentina won for his work Triangular Riggle, which is made of welded iron. The mathematical idea here is a recursive substitution algorithm implemented as a Lindemeyer system. It was used to design the path in space that the sculpture follows. In the category of best craftsmanship, Friedhelm Kirpig from Germany won for his worm-eaten sphere. It's a beautifully made sculpture from laser-cut stainless steel. Planar slices outline a sphere from which two helical tunnels have been removed. I like how it makes a connection between two and three dimensions and how it leads you to think about complements and intersections. For the category most innovative, Saul Schleimer from Britain and Henry Segerman from Britain, Australia, and currently in the US, won for their sculpture, Triple Gear. It's a 3D printed arrangement of three gears in which every pair is in contact. That wouldn't work in the plane, but they discovered it works in three dimensions and they found a way to engineer it in practice. And the Best of Show Award goes to Mike Naylor from Norway for his Human Platonic Transform. This cyclic animation shows six people rearranging into all five platonic solids, 
with various ways of moving from one configuration to the next. It's a mesmerizing presentation of mathematical ideas using the human figure. As you watch it, you'll see how the various limbs of the figures are continuously rearranged to solve the problem of building various numbers of edges and vertices, always using a constant number of people. If works like these intrigue you, and you'd like to see more mathematical art creations and chat with the artists in person, then come to the Bridges Conference next year. And in the gallery, you'll be able to vote for your own favorites.